Cash here with Cash for Reviews, and today we are taking a look at the DJI Mini 3 Pro after about six months of ownership and use. Going into 2023 here, I've used this drone for real estate, for automotive purposes, and just to capture some really awesome views. In this video, I'll talk about product features, things that I like and things that I really don't like, and one particular thing that sets this drone apart from its competition. I'll also get into the scariest moment that I've had with this drone, which is when I crashed it. Finally, I'll go over whether I think that this drone is worth your hard earned cash. Before we get into the review though, let us know down below if the Mini 3 Pro would be your first drone or if you already have drones. To start out, let's go over what's included when you buy a DJI Mini 3 Pro. There are a few options for combinations that you could buy. You could buy just the drone itself, you could buy the drone with a basic controller, or you could do what I did, which is buy the drone with the RC controller, which has a nice standalone screen. This package comes with the drone itself. It comes with a cover for the gimbal so you could keep it protected in storage. It comes with some extra propellers, a charging cable, and a screwdriver in case you need to replace those propellers. Again, this package comes with the more advanced RC controller, but in this video, I'm gonna focus on the drone itself and I'll do a separate video on that controller. Now that you know what you're gonna get, let's talk price point. So this package runs $909 and with that you get everything in front of you. If you want just the drone, you could get that for $669. It's definitely not a cheap drone, especially for a mini drone. So in this video, I'll go over all of the features and let you know at the end if I think it was worth it. If you're considering buying one of these drones, I would really appreciate it if you click the links down below to places where you could get them. This helps support me in the channel at no extra cost to you. This way I could keep spending time to make these videos. And now that you know about price point, let's go ahead and get into features of this drone and why you might want it. To start out, let's talk size. And for that, I have a banana for scale. One of the major appeals of this drone is the size because, well, it is a mini drone that is very compact. Folded up, this thing is about six inches by three and a half by two and a half. So it really doesn't take up that much space. Unfolded, you're looking at 10 by just under 15 by about two and three quarters of an inch. It does gain some size when you unfold it, but again, this thing is not a huge drone and it doesn't take up a lot of space. With the lightweight included battery, this drone weighs in at under 249 grams, which means it doesn't have to be registered in most countries. That's a big appeal for a lot of people with this drone, and honestly, that's a reason that most people are looking at this class of drone. However, later in this video, I'll talk about if I think a mini drone is suitable for professional use or if you need something bigger. The actual construction of this drone is pretty nice. It's made out of plastic, but it's high quality plastic that's pretty rigid, but again, I did crash this thing, so I'll talk about how it held up also later in the video. Overall, this thing is very small and very lightweight, and it packs some huge performance in this small package. And now let's talk about flight specifications. So we're gonna talk flight time, how far you could actually fly this thing away, how long the battery lasts, and things like that. To start, this drone has several different modes. It has a cinematic mode that slows all of the motions. It has a normal mode that is kinda quick, but it's not insanely fast, and you could still use your obstacle avoidance, which I'll we'll talk about later. And then you have a sport mode, which you could unleash the full performance of this drone. In that mode, this drone will do about 35 miles an hour, and that's decently quick for a little drone like this, especially if it's your first drone. Advertised flight time with the included battery is 34 minutes, and if you get the bigger batteries, that bumps you up to 47 minutes. That's basically the absolute max that you will get with this drone. With the included battery, in theory, you could fly this drone about 11 total miles, and this drone is rated at level five wind resistance, so it should be able to withstand wind gusts of about 23 miles an hour without it seriously being affected. This drone does feature obstacle sensing, which is a very appealing feature for beginners, and this has two sensors on the front. Those are the main sensors that the drone uses. It has two additional ones on the rear, basically in the same position, and it has downward facing sensors. This drone doesn't have upward facing sensors, however, so you're not really monitored in that direction and you could crash this straight up into things. 
Later in this video, I'll get into pros and cons, and during that section, I'll talk about how this detection system works, the limitations of it, and some problems that I found with the system. But first, let's talk about the camera, which is probably the reason most of you guys are interested in this drone. This drone features a 1 over 1.3 sensor, which is very similar in size to an iPhone 14 Pro. Obviously, this is a small drone though, and this sensor is much smaller than something like a Micro Four Thirds camera, and it's a tiny sensor compared to something like a full frame camera. With that said, this thing still has some seriously impressive performance. This drone is capable of shooting 4K video up to 60 frames per second, and it's capable of shooting 4K HDR video to 30 frames per second. If you're interested in slow motion, this drone could do slow motion to 120 frames per second in 1080p. It could output two different color profiles, normal, which is nice color, basically straight out of the drone that you could use for your videos right away, or D, cine-like, which is cinematic footage that you could grade after the fact. This basically outputs more data and you have more information to modify the colors and how your footage looks later in editing programs. In terms of photo, this thing is also pretty impressive. The main camera is a 48 megapixel camera, so you could output either 12 or 48 megapixel photos depending on what you're looking for. This camera could also take a wide range of panoramas from super wide angle shots to sphere shots to 180 degree shots and I've been pretty impressed with that. Like with video, you have the option to output in either JPEG or a JRAW format which gives you more data to work with and modify in post. In terms of some special features and cool software that set this drone apart from the competition, well, there's quite a bit to get into. They make this drone super beginner friendly and super easy to fly. And when you start flying this drone, there's basically a full tutorial on your controller that you could follow that will teach you the basics to get the drone off the ground and get it landed back home. Two of these really nice features that I personally like is the auto takeoff feature and then auto return to home button. This way, if you're flying and you lose track of where your drone is, you could essentially call it back to a home point and it will land itself there safely. In terms of more advanced, really nice features that made me personally pick this drone, this drone is capable of flying what they call master shots. This is essentially a pre-programmed super cinematic flight path where you press a button, you select a subject on your screen, and the drone will follow that and get a bunch of really nice shots for you. This means you don't have to be an expert pilot to get super cinematic professional level shots. And similar to master shots, you could track subjects and get this drone to either follow you walking around, follow you while doing an activity, or get it to track something like cars or equipment. I did find some downsides with that though, which I'll get into later. It's really cool to be able to select a subject on your screen and have your drone just track it, orbit it, or follow it around. And finally, my favorite special feature that this drone offers, which is a huge reason that I picked it, is true vertical filming. This means that the actual camera on the gimbal rotates 90 degrees, so you're getting full 4K video in vertical mode. This allows you to get wider shots in vertical mode, and it allows you to get all of that 4K data to modify and crop in on later. This way you don't have to be cropping in on landscape footage, losing detail, and potentially losing what you were trying to film. If you're into social media or shorts or anything like that, this is a must-have feature with a drone, and it is just sweet that this drone offers it. And now that we've touched on some of the fancy features that set this drone apart from the competition, let's talk about the scary moment that I had with this thing when I crashed it. I had turned obstacle avoidance off so I could fly through a tight space. Once we get into the pros and cons, I'll touch on this, but you do need to turn it off if there's objects even remotely close to the drone. So anyway, I had turned that off and I was trying to fly over myself through a tree and I clipped a branch with the drone and this thing dropped like a rock out of the sky. My heart dropped too and I thought I had just ruined my very expensive new drone, but luckily I pulled it up out of the mud because it did fall in mud and the drone was actually pretty much fine. It was dirty, so I went ahead, let the mud dry, cleaned it off, and this thing survived. Again, this fall was only from about five feet and it was into a muddy, relatively soft surface, but I was pretty happy with the durability here. I thought for sure I was gonna be sending this thing back to DJI for repairs. The second crash happened right after I recorded this video. 
I was orbiting, trying to get some nice shots of these excavators, and I went straight sideways into a tree. There is no sideways obstacle detection on this drone, which means it's very easy to do this and crash your drone. I was very lucky here that there was no damage and I was able to recover it, but do keep this in mind. And now let's get into the pros and cons of this drone. The first pro is that the camera quality from this drone is truly great. This drone has been the craziest piece of camera equipment that I've got since I bought literally my first camera. It is awesome being able to fly this thing around, get videos and photos from anywhere in the air that look truly great. I use this drone for business, photographing construction and real estate, and this drone has done the trick. All of my customers have been super happy with the quality that comes out of it, and I really can't say much more. Unless you're doing movie quality stuff, you could make a drone like this work really well for you. Some other pros is the portability of this drone is super nice. It's super compact and super lightweight, but that does also create a con, which I'll touch on shortly. The durability so far in this drone has been pretty good. Again, I fly it in some dirty conditions sometimes at some construction sites where there's sand and dust in the air and this thing's been fine. And with that crash, this thing did survive and I'm pretty happy with that. This drone has great range with this controller and you could fly it really far. I personally have only flown it to about half a mile to three quarters of a mile away because I didn't want to go farther because at that point you literally can't see it. The battery life I would say is good with this drone with the included lightweight battery. Again, it's rated at 34 minutes, but you will never get 34 minutes of flight time out of this. On average, with the type of flight that I've been doing, I would say you could push it to about 25 minutes, but I would never fly more than that because you always want enough battery to land your drone back with you. Again, the vertical video on this drone is awesome. It makes it so you could export video straight to social media, and it makes it so you don't have to crop in on horizontal video, losing quality and potentially cropping in too far on what you were filming. Master Shots has also been a great feature that I've been super, super happy with. Again, this was my first really nice high quality drone and it allows me to film super professional, super nice shots without a ton of experience flying. And to me, that is insanely valuable. Which brings me to the next point. This drone is super easy to fly regardless of Master Shots and I really appreciate how DJI did such a nice job making this drone beginner friendly and easy to fly. Now, as much as I love this drone, it is not perfect and there are several things that honestly I don't really like and I had higher expectations for. One of these is the obstacle detection, but it's not exactly what you might be thinking. Now, the obstacle detection on this is definitely super strong, which makes it hard to fly in through narrow spaces with it on. It's definitely extra cautious, and if you're flying towards anything, like a tight space that you're trying to fly through, it will limit the drone's motion and make it hard to do your maneuver. Of course, this makes sense so you don't crash the drone, but it's something to keep in mind. Obviously, the more time you spend flying drones, the less you'll need that anyway. The next con comes with the weight of this drone, and that is that it's pretty easily affected by wind. I've only flown this thing two or three times when I've actually got warnings that the wind was too strong and that the aircraft was trying to return to me, but when taking time lapses or videos, you could see that it moves around in stronger wind conditions. With that said, overall, I've been quite happy with it, but it's not a brick up in the air and it does get blown around. Another thing to keep in mind is this drone is not waterproof, so you can't fly it in the rain. Getting back into talking about the speed of this drone, 35 miles an hour is pretty quick, but I have had some instances that I wish this drone was faster. I've also noticed that the panoramic photos from this thing often aren't perfect, and you'll be able to see the different images that the drone takes to piece together one of those wide angle photos. This isn't a huge deal, but if you're looking for perfection straight out of the camera, sometimes this isn't it. I've also found that sometimes the screen on the controller isn't super responsive in the DJI app, which means I find myself clicking stuff twice, accidentally hitting wrong buttons, and I don't know if it's a hardware thing or a software thing, but sometimes there's just a bit of lag and a bit of disconnect between what I think the controller should be doing and what it actually does. And finally, two more quick cons before I get into my biggest disappointment with this drone. One is that this thing doesn't have an onboard fan, which means if it's sitting idle and not moving through the air, like when you're updating firmware or getting ready to fly, this thing does get quite hot. 
I put a fan on mine while updating firmware so that way there is at least air moving over it so it didn't get super hot. Also, obstacle avoidance and tracking is not available in every frame rate. Once you're getting up to the super high data rates, it cuts back on being able to track people and avoid obstacles, so keep that in mind. Typically, I fly in 4K30 anyway, so it's not a big deal, but if you're going above that, you will have some limitations. And finally, the biggest con of this drone that I've found so far is honestly that the focus tracking and all of the tracking that this drone does really isn't perfect. That said, it's super impressive, but you could definitely get better shots if you're a really good pilot being really smooth on the controls. I've had some times at jobs when I was trying to track equipment with the built-in tracking, and it would consistently lose equipment that I was trying to track. This isn't a huge deal, it just meant that I had to manually fly and really use my skills rather than relying on the focus track system that this drone has. I am extremely picky in these situations though, so if you're just hoping to get pretty decent tracking, most of the time this drone will be able to do it. Also, I found that point of interest tracking and tracking during master shots works well almost all of the time, but again, there have been instances where it's lost the subject and I've had to refly or manually fly shots. This really is my biggest gripe and Honestly, it's not a huge problem, it's just something that I wish was a little bit better. And now, after all of that information, after all of my six months of flying this drone, I want to get into whether or not I would recommend you pick up a DJI Mini 3 Pro. My simple answer is yes. I have absolutely loved this drone. Again, it's been a crazy piece of camera equipment for me, and it's been my favorite thing that I've got since my first camera. With that said, it does have its drawbacks, which I mentioned in the con section of this video, and there are instances where other drones are better suited for you than this one. Again, I personally have used this drone for my YouTube channels to spice up some videos, for my business in construction and real estate, and it has been really great. However, if you don't need all the bells and whistles, if you don't need the 4K60, if you don't even need 4K, and if you don't want to use the active tracking features, I think there are better, more cost-effective drones for you. If you don't need all of the crazy features, I would probably recommend looking into the Mini SE or the Mini 2. These drones don't come with the vertical filming or the master shots or anything like that, but they're much cheaper beginner drones that you could try out and still get some really good footage with. I have links to these drones down below as well if you want to check them out, and again, I really appreciate it if you click through those links and do take a look at those drones. In summary, again, I loved my time with the Mini 3 Pro, I'm going to keep it in my arsenal for a long time, and I've been exceptionally happy with it. If you want to learn more about the RC controller or about the Fly More kit that you could get with these drones, go ahead and click on my channel and click on the cards at the end of this video. I thank you for watching and I hope to see you at the next one.